Welcome back to the Thursday Night Football Preview. This week we have another fucking doozy. Uh, <laughs> the Rams at the 49ers. Ooh. Wow, I'm excited. Riveting television. By the way, Nick's not here. He had other things to do. Short staff. Fuck him, you know? <laughs> I'm sure he's really mad at, about missing talking about this game. Yeah, he's 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 probably itching to talk about the yeah, Rams and the Niners. He probably had like four pages of game notes for this. Yeah, probably. You know who he is. <laughs> Five binders full of shit. Um, Holla. Anyway, oh, gosh, I, your boy's playing in this game. Are you taking the Niners? No, I'm not taking the Niners. See, I was oh, gonna he's say, where going we, against Hoyer. I was going to say, where do we start in this game? <laughs> I, know, I was going to say, wh- wh- I don't know what to say. I mean... Yeah, Hoyer has not played well, to say the least. Ever. He, he looks bad. But at the same time... <laughs> has he ever looked good? I mean, he did, he looked good in that one season with the... You know, he, it ended wrong. Yeah. But he looked good with the one season with the Texans. He was a, he. was You could say he's been the Texans' best quarterback since... I, I guess Fitzpatrick was okay. Yeah, but how, what does that say? It's not saying much. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> but, I mean, in terms of what are his weapons... Like, there was a play last week when... They threw a fade to Pierre Garçon at, at like third and goal, and when you're throwing fades to Pierre Garçon, you're in you're in trouble. I mean, they don't like not. I mean, yeah, Pierre Garçon's a good player though. He is, but he's a you know number so two receiver. So is Carlos receiver. Hyde. Carlos Hyde's super Yo, super solid. Everyone outside of Carlos Hyde, the skill positions are all brand new with a new coach. So it's got it's it's it looks like that's exactly what it looks like. Brian Hoyer, what did he throw for ninety nine yards? Ninety nine yards. <laughs> No one had over 26 yards in the receiving game. Uh, your two is Marquise Goodwin, who's an Olympic sprinter. You know? I, I will say, though, Marquise Goodwin dropped a couple passes that could have been for big plays. But that's what he is. Like He was with, yeah. he was that in Buffalo, too. Yeah, that's true. You know, he's just a guy who can stretch the field and catch the deep ball. He caught this one slant last week that I feel like if he caught it, he was gone. And that the whole game, the whole complexion of the whole game changes if he catches that ball. For sure. Yeah, so, he's big play potential. That's and Look, the 49ers' defensive line looked good. I... It's hard to not look good against a Seattle offensive oh line that's just in shambles right now. I had Seattle as my survivor pool pick. I was sweating that one out to the end. What is going on with Seattle? I mean, it's just old line. Uh, did you pick them to win the Super Bowl? I picked them to win the Super Bowl, but here's the thing about Seattle, though. You got to remember that this is Seattle's forte, and this is Seattle's MO, right? Seattle has started the season slow. Even, Very- in, their, even in the seasons where they were good all year, they still started slow and got wins. So Seattle's that type of team that doesn't hit their stride until week eight. So I, I'm expecting to see a different team out of Seattle. But for now, I'm not surprised at what I see. Because it seems like Russell Wilson takes that long to get into his drive. It seems like they need to find a running game. Chris Carson was playing okay. Yeah, he had a good game. For yeah, that. he had a good game. Thomas Rawls did five carries for four yards. He's done. Eddie Lacy was a healthy scratch. So that backfield is Carson's. Yeah. Lacy's out. So... If they can get that backfield in order, if they can get the offensive line to at least give Russell Wilson some time, I don't think I've seen Russell Wilson step up into the pocket yet this year. So He's been on the run, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think they're all right. Dude, how did we start talking about the Seahawks? Because what else are we going to talk yeah. about? It's the 49ers <laughs> and the fucking Rams. I mean, we're talking about backfields. Uh, that's probably the highlight of this game, the backfields. Mm-hmm. Todd Gurley and Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde ran for 124 against a pretty good Seahawks defense. That's pretty impressive. That was my biggest takeaway from that game. Was a breakout game for Carlos Hyde. Not his usual week one breakout, but week two, you know, found his wheels. And when you see a team like the Rams, who got run all over by the combination of P. Ryan, Rob Kelly before he got hurt, he, I think he broke a rib. I think he might be out four yeah, to six he did weeks. Break a rib. Yeah. That's starting tough... in my fantasy lineup. Well, if you have Rob Kelly and you don't have P. Ryan, you deserve it. Uh, Isn't it Perrine? P. Ryan. Is it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's one I checked right before the show because I know I was going to say it a lot. Does anyone know what's going on with Sua Cravens? No. What's that? What's going on with him? Yeah. He supposedly met with the owner and he's like ready to come back. I don't know when he's like going to come back for football. There was like this rumor that he was like ready to up and just quit football oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then just, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, I don't know. So we're just going to talk about every other team. but uh. I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> but, but anyway. Uh, that running game, sorry, but that running game, Carlos Hyde. Had a big game against the Seattle yeah. defense that is fucking good. Also, you were talking about the skins, my bad. But Chris yeah. Thompson, too, 77 yards. Chris Thompson as well. So, e- even on a run, when you don't see Chris Thompson usually get rushing attempts, you usually see him in the passing game. Right. Three running backs over 65 yards and against the Rams defense. they ran. Uh, I know P. Ryan had 21 carries. I know Rob Kelly had like 14 before he went out. He They ran the ball almost 40 times. When you 
when you see that and then you see the rant and then you see Carl's Hyde coming through, if Carl's Hyde could run and run and run and run and run on that Rams defense, the Aaron Donald didn't look the same. He missed a lot of training camp, but we talked about it last week. He also missed some snaps. Like, he was on a snap count, it appeared. Yeah. It, like was... I mean, we talked about it last week. When you miss training camp, there's no substitute for game reps. Right. So he looked bad. And if he can't get into shape, that's he's the linchpin of that whole defense. So if they get run on again, the 49ers have a chance to win this game. I mean, yeah, I think it's going to be a big Carlos Hyde game. I mean, he had 124 yards last week against the fucking Seahawks. So, I mean, going against a a team that just gave up all those yards to three different running backs – as we just discussed, could be a big game for him. DFS play. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about Sammy Watkins? Sammy Watkins looked uh, sprightly in some of those plays yesterday. I think it's because Jared Goff looked like the Jared Goff of last year again. 15 to 25, dude. Although he had a couple, you know, big plays, like long balls going for him. But Sammy Watkins just wasn't involved. That's what I'm saying. Two grabs for 30 yards. He looked good when he touched the ball. Yeah. He made a lot of plays, run, runs up to the catch. Dude, this guy's a top 10 pick at he, one point. He's like, a true he weapon. He has the talent. Yeah. Picked over OBJ, if I'm not mistaken, right, in that draft? I believe so. I yeah, he be went mistaken. like seven overall. They traded up for him the Bills. Yeah. So, I mean, the man has talent. And if Jared Goff could find a way, I, I will say Jared Goff looks much, much better than the quarterback we saw last year. He looks more comfortable. No, it is the offense as a whole. I think McVay is just like a huge – is just going to do wonders for that team overall going forward. Not Maybe not right away, like this season, but just going forward. You could, It's paying off already. One of the lowest scoring teams in the league last year, the Rams were. Now they put up – 46 against a terrible Colts team and 20 against a, a decent Redskins team. Uh, do you think that the fact that McVay uh, is it didn't get, I don't know, he doesn't get a, as much love uh, as as a guy like Kyle Shanahan, but he had just as much of an impact on the team that he was coaching as Kyle Shanahan did. He got Kirk Cousins all his money, and now like Kirk Cousins is off to a suspect start this year you know, without him. So, I mean, yeah, I definitely think he was underappreciated. Speaking of Kirk Cousins... The future 49ers quarterback. Kirk? Yeah. With Shanahan? You heard it here first. Maybe not first. Maybe like third. <laughs> I heard there was rumors that, I mean, we're just going to go off on a tangent. Yo, it's crazy, that, though, man. Just tr- like Kyle Shanahan, he had an MVP candidate in uh, Matt Ryan last year. Well, not candidate. He was the MVP. And the highest scoring offense in the league. And now you, it's crazy how you take him, move him, still, you know, same schemes, mastermind, to a team with – Way less talent, and it's just not the same anymore. Yeah, I mean, like way less talent on ev- in, is, every in every single aspect. aspect. Right, aspect. right, yeah. right. Even Carl's Hyde, they're probably their best offensive player, is yeah. not as good as Devonta Freeman. Yeah. Or maybe you could even say he might not be as good as Tevin Coleman. If Tevin, if Tevin Coleman ever got the opportunity to be a every down running back, I wouldn't say that, but you could say that if you really wanted to. I screwed it. <laughs> but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> um, your boy Todd Gurley. I mean, didn't wasn't as bad as you think he was in the in the running game. I mean, he was he's, not. He, I feel good. like he's turning not like he's turning into, but I feel like he's definitely becoming more involved in the passing game. That's that's the only thing saving Gurley from like fantasy in fantasy wise, right? So you have these. He was never part of the it, as a rookie. He really didn't catch the ball much, but then last year it, he saw an uptick, and then this year he's seeing an even bigger uptick. He's really part of the the offense, so. And you saw him, uh, McVay, he used Chris Thompson a lot last year. So he's bringing that over. He's using Gur- Gurley as that back. Gurley's on pace for 800 receiving yards this year. That's nothing to sniff at. Jesus. That's a lot for a running back. Oh, yeah. And if he could stay in that, because Gurley needs space. One thing about Gurley is he dances in the backfield too much. He he comes to a stop too much in the backfield. I watch him play, and it's just like he just stops moving his feet in the backfield, and that's where he gets into trouble. Yeah, there's a difference between what he does and what like Le'Veon Bell does because Le'Veon Bell is one of the most patient runners in the league. If you see, he gets handoffs. He gets right behind his his line, but he's moving his feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, and then he hits his hole. But Gurley, I just feel like – same thing what I used to feel like with Rashad uh, Jennings on the Giants. He'd get the ball, get to – to the offensive line and just become flat-footed. Right. And just, like, try to... And it's like, dude, you now you're at a disadvantage because they're all moving and you're not moving. It's, like, going to be hard to get by anybody. It doesn't matter how fast you are. But it does matter how fast you are if you're out in open space now. Right. And Gurley's seeing a lot of... And that could be a really big secret weapon for the, the Rams, that Gurley out of the backfield kind of thing. Now, you got to remember, they played the Colts, you know? Yep. So, and and then not a great defense that they played last, last week in the Redskins, so... I would uh, do do you all of a sudden say Todd Gurley's this year's Melvin Gordon? I don't know you if you do, 
But there's definitely some positives to take out of Todd Gurley's performance last week. But the schedule gets much much tougher for the Rams after next week in terms of running defense, rushing defense in general. So I I still am doubtful about Todd Gurley myself. I like that they have more confidence in golf. They're letting him throw the ball and shit because he doesn't look that bad. You know what I mean? Like I mean, like we said, we did play the Colts and the Redskins, who aren't just like the best uh, defenses in the world. But it's I feel like if you are you're a Rams fan, you definitely have to be optimistic about the fact that like this guy is like this is your guy now. You know what I mean? It's not like we're still looking or whatever. This seems to be so far. I mean, we're week two. But so far, it seems to be this is the guy moving forward. I think you grow more optimistic here with the chance to go two and one. I guess you know a pretty lethargic Niners team so far through two weeks. I mean, yeah, you get that winning record with a long week, all you know, extra four days off, going to the week after. You got to be feeling good as a, as a Rams fan and as a Rams, you know, as the Rams being part of that team. A lot if of your golf, like confidence is key, obviously for any young player. And if he has the confidence of a two and one team. You know, going forward, I think that that helps them big time. I think you're seeing the the impact of an improved offensive line for the Rams as well. That's true too. They went out and picked they, up guys. Yeah, they picked up a lot of guys. They invested in that offensive line is coming out, it, particularly at left tackle. So sure they picked up Whit, was it Whitworth? Yeah, Whitworth yeah. for the Bengals. So they 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 have invested and they're protecting their quarterback investment and they're protecting their running back investment. And then so far, it's been paying off. Not not exactly traditionally but when you're on pace for 800 passing yards i mean receiving yards you yeah. do something right not only that like Gurley, you talk about him in open space he has the ability to to run through guys pretty much and make guys miss which is you know yards after contact is pretty much everything with that guy yeah his rushing yard his average yards per carry isn't all that so he's gonna have to make guys miss and you know to move the ball and, and he certainly has the ability to do so La- last year he wasn't great at that so right. this this year much better because he's in open space. Who do you think is going to be like an X factor in this game? Aside for I think we all kind of agree that Carlos Hyde has to be, probably it could be the one who changes the course of this game. But who do you think outside of that could be an X factor in this game that's going to give the other team like their team an advantage? I think Cooper Cup is a you know what let's go with the Coop Cup let's go with both wide receivers for the Rams. Uh, we were just talking about how Sammy Watkins looked good in the flashes that he showed. Um, they got to get him the ball. They got to get yeah. him the ball. Cooper Cup is becoming the guy that Jared Goff, like his former roommate. So really true friends, these two guys. Right. You know, so when you look at the when you look at Cup, he's forcing the ball to Cup a little bit. And out when you're a young kid, you, you like your guy and you go to your guy. But they got a weapon in Sammy Watkins. Yeah, you can't let that go to waste. And if and that weapon has been going to waste for the last... Four However years, many years, yeah. four or five years, however long he's been in the league. Like, think about OBJ's career, and then think they were drafted in the same year, I hope. Like, I, I, I'm i not, don't quote me, but they were drafted at least one year apart or in the same year, right? And just look at the career arcs of the two of them. It's it's not even, like, close to similar because one of them has Eli Manning throwing to him and the other one has bullshit. So if Goff can, be, can get in a rhythm with Sammy Watkins, dude, that is a... That is a potent wide receiver weapon, and that is someone who can change the fortunes of a game, I think. And especially in this game where if you're the Niners, you're not scoring many points. So one big play or two big plays could really break this one open and give you the win. For sure. I'm going to go with two defensive players. I think Donald, Mm. who we talked about, you know, if he he gets another week of practice under his belt, can he be out on the field longer? And then neutralize Carlos Hyde. Yeah. You know, just causing problems in the backfield. And then. Solomon Thomas on the other side, the young rookie second overall pick. What can he do? Can he get back there to disrupt Goff? Can he stuff Gurley? Can that defense? That defense is young. Ruben Foster's out, but that whole front seven is young. It's led by Navarro Bowman, who's a great leader, you know, a great voice to have back there. So, you know, who's going to disrupt the passing game? You know, who's going to get after the quarterback the most? Two bad quarterbacks. Who's going to shoot someone's confidence down to the ground real quick right away? What happens early, early and often, as you say, you got to get back there early and often. And I think whatever front seven does that leaves their offense a better chance to win the game. Uh, Vegas has this line at three. The <laughs> Niners are getting three at home. Who do you guys think is winning this? Let's go outright because I mean, yeah, you know well, what? I mean that doesn't change my pick. I'd probably still take the Rams minus three. I like, like, you know, McVay has done wonders, like I said earlier, about the, with that offense. They're putting up points. 
you know, against this, like I said, two decent defenses. I mean, well, actually, I'm sorry, one decent defense and the Colts are just a debacle. But, you know, I like the Rams here. I like the talent. They got the talent. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Sammy Watkins, all reliable receivers. If Todd Gurley gets going for once, can he start running the ball? You know, that gives Jared Goff some time to drop back a little bit and then find these guys downfield. Normal circumstances, I would take the Rams without a doubt. Uh, the fact that it's Thursday, the home team usually has a pretty big advantage. Um, so I'm still going to go Rams, but if I was picking against the spread, I think I'd go Niners plus three. But I'm going to pick the Rams to win outright. I just think they have, like Ball said, I don't think the Niners could score with them at this point. Um, their defense is not great, but it's not suspect enough to give up 21 points to the Niners, I don't think. And I think they're going to, I think they could score more than 21 points against the, the Niners. So I'm going to go with the Rams just just for the simple fact that I, I don't think the offense keeps up. Yeah, the offense doesn't look good for the 49ers. That's probably that's the same reason why I'm going to take the Rams because, I mean, the Niners, but they scored three points. or f- What is it? They what? scored nine against the Seahawks. They scored nine, and then week one they scored three, I think. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're scoring 12 points in two weeks and, you know, the Rams seem to be moving the ball and you have another year of golf there, everyone seems – he seems more comfortable. That you have Ed Sammy Watkins. Yes, he's new, but he is a top talent. So, I mean, just a simple fact. I mean, just reiterating what you're saying, basically. I think they're going to score the game. It could get ugly. I'm not really interested in it, obviously. But, uh. I, will, I will say two things for the Niners. Number one, if Carlos Hyde can get going and they control the pace of the game and they leave the Rams' offense on the, on the sidelines, I think they have, a major, they have a major chance of winning this game. Number two, Kyle Shanahan is an offensive genius. So let's not discount the Niners just yet in terms of offense because they did just play two very good defenses, right? These are two defenses that are top, maybe top in the league when you're talking about Carolina and you're talking about um, Seattle, right? So when you're looking at those two defenses and you're looking at that offense, you can see how they struggle. It's going to be interesting to see them against the Rams at home, a division opponent that they kind of know a little better. Uh, the fact that this in division is a little bit of a little bit more, I don't know, there's more reckon. It's more recognizable for the Niners, I guess. Although everyone's new on the Niners and everyone's new on the Rams, so you can't really yeah. go with that. So, uh, it, I mean, it's possible that I, I, I don't, I wouldn't be shocked if the Niners won this game. Let's put it that way. There's, there are circumstances where the Niners not only win this game but win by a fair it's the margin. Perfect game for Brian Hoyer to like, you know, get going. I'd say, yeah, or so, like a middle of the road Rams defense. Why not Kyle Shanahan at home, like you said. I wouldn't be su- surprised if either of these teams win. They're still kind of hard to gauge. Good but win. How about this? 78-yard reception. Good win. Calling it now. 78? 78. 78. <laughs> Yo, uh, if that comes true. You know what? Tim Call. I, I haven't heard any Tim Call since the week one Gillisley PI on, in the end zone. That was a good one. He called that, remember? Yeah, that was ridiculous. What was that call? I, I don't know. You're looking at me kind of like, what are you <laughs> said, about? You said I gonna- said Gillisley's going to score on a Brandon Cook's pass interference in the end zone. That's exactly what happened. Wait, you said the Brandon, Brandon Cooks part? I said yeah, the Brandon Cooks part. Yeah. I do remember the, the P.I. call. I, I thought like, it was wow. Gronk, but maybe it was Cooks. I forgot. I don't remember. It was Cooks. That was crazy. Dang. So 78-yard. I do's when I do's. 78-yard uh, Goodwin uh, reception. I lock it up. Okay. I don't even know what I'm pressing. I'm pressing the middle of this You know he's going to have? Table. One catch, negative two yards. It's be <laughs> a, a, a screenplay that gets blown up. Um, all right. Well. I guess that's that, this fucking game. Can we get some good Thursday night football What's the games? next Thursday night game? Yeah, I, I got a third. <laughs> because Are we really game? searching for the next one already? Yeah, because this is ridiculous. I'm not going to lie, though. I had a little more fun breaking that one down than I thought I was going to. No, fuck this. <laughs> Week four, Thursday. Bears-Packers. Oh, I wonder who I'm taking oh, in that geez. one. Patriots Bucks. That'll be that's what a good I look one. forward. That's to. two weeks. Who's at home? At Bucks too. At Bucks. And I'm taking the Patriots. <laughs> Panthers right, Eagles. Some good games. After. That's a good game. All right, all right, all right. We're out here. Chiefs out here. Raiders. That's okay. a good one. Okay. Is that in Mexico City? <laughs> it might be actually. I don't know. I doubt it on a Thursday. That no. was it, the last Thursday no, it was, was Sunday night game. Oh, it was Sunday night. Oh, November second. Book it. Bills Jets. <laughs> hey. The battle of oh man the number one pick maybe Titan Steelers that's another good one all right so we got some good Thursday night football games it's not always gonna be bullshit here guys okay (laughs) hey this wasn't no bullshit yeah that was good analysis 
Bullshit I'm games. Not, I'm talking about bull- fucking great analysis. I'm talking about the fact that no one's really interested in watching these two teams unless you're from these cities because they're that bad right now. Or true. if you break down football at a podcast. How many fantasy relevant players are on this game? I Carlos say, Hyde ooh. off top. I would say Hyde and th- Gurley. Garcon, maybe. Garcon, maybe. Garcon's Garcon. definitely. Gurley. I would say even like. Watkins, Cup. Don Watkins in there? Yeah. I, who is who's starting Watkins? I'd say in like a twelve man league. You Yo, Jordy, start yeah, Jordy Nelson just went in a, down. In a twelve man league, you're, you're, there could be a cup flex somewhere. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Last week, Jason had Cup as his number one waiver pickup. And if over. it's in your league, a Brian Hoyer start. You know, that's your guy. <laughs> Maybe on Tim's roster. <laughs> Yo, speaking of my roster, Jameis Winston, get your shit together. Oh, I spent I mean, a lot of draft capital on you, on, man. Like he, seventh round, he barely had a chance to get his shit. I going. know. Get your shit together. The All defense right. of their thing. Well, that is it for the Thursday Night Football preview. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. See you then. Cheers.